I, I do think I have one super ability. <laughs> you know, some people might see me play and they see me do all this. You know, doing all these different things. And the truth is, that is definitely not a special ability. I'm a super slow learner. My special ability is not memorizing things. It's not that I pick up things quickly or I just have a good ear. If I have any special ability at all, it's the ability. Derek Brown, we're here with Beatbox Sax, Derek Brown. Some people might not believe this, but deep, deep down, I'm more of an introvert than an extrovert. If you see me on stage, you know, I'm an author. Hey, everybody, and doing, you know, cracking jokes and everything. But deep, deep down, I like being by myself in a quiet hotel room like mm. this. Have you played at all today? Have you warmed up at all? Uh, I did a little demo at a booth earlier, um, but but that's, that, that's the benefit of these Legere reeds is you don't have to wet them, you just... I mean, I just leave it on the mouthpiece and just put it in the case and pull it out and I'm ready to go. You mean you so. don't swab it out every time? Not every time. <laughs> so now what I do is I swab it out, clean the mouthpiece, I even rinse it with water, put the reed back on, set the sacks back up, all clean now in a stand, so that then the next time it's just, oh, just pick it up and oh, play. Okay. Half of just practicing, half of getting better as a musician, it's just starting to practice. Yeah. Once you start, you're there. You're going to spend the time. You got any more like really cool tips like that that come to you off the top of your head? Who? Uh, mm, um, let's see. The Pomodori te technique, if I'm calling that right, and it's named after like this tomato alarm clock that goes off like every 15 minutes. And it's this idea that, you know, a lot of times we practice something like, let's say we're going to work on, you know, one of these weird techniques that I do, like double tonguing or slap tonguing. And you start it and you're, you're extra motivated. And then soon enough, an hour goes by and you're just like, not getting anywhere, you're drained, and you just want to give up. And you do give up, because so much of our practicing, it's about motivation, staying motivated. And so this idea, this Pomodoro technique, is if you set an alarm, you know, you set it every 10, 15 minutes, when that goes off, no matter what, switch what you're practicing. Because there's, there's so many things we need to be working on, you know, as like, like if you're a jazz musician, you got to work on, you know, your, your scales, and this could be classical too. You got to work on your long tones, your scales, your reading, your transcribing, your ear training, so many things. And if we just get caught up doing one thing and then we get drained, there goes our practice session. Versus you have this timer, it goes off, after 10, 15 minutes, no matter what, no matter how bad it's going, no matter how good it's going, switch to the next thing. Mm. You'll hit it tomorrow. And then you've got fresh energy and okay, now I'm gonna do my now I'm gonna do my scales. Oh, that goes off. Now I'm gonna do my two five one licks. Now it goes off. And that's that's I think that has been key for me at a lot of stages in my life when because so much of the artistic life for me, it might just be me. I don't think it's just me. I hope it's not just me. But this idea of like every other day, me, it usually is like a two-day shift. Things are going great. And I'm like, hey, yeah, I'm, get, I'm getting a little better at this. I have some ideas left. Almost without fail, two days later, I suck at the saxophone. I have no ideas left. This is it for me. I have nowhere to go. My ear is terrible. You know, and once you get in that, and that going down that drain, that... You, everything's bad, you know, but but the key thing is you you keep going, yeah. and I just know that if I just press on, two days later, it's going to be good. I'm I'm glad you said that. I made a video a couple weeks ago, and the title of it was "I Suck." Oh yeah, yeah. you know. So and, and <laughs> in that video, that. <laughs> I said like, yeah, everybody or at least goes Jay through and that. I have that. <laughs> no. no, everybody everybody goes through that, and I think it's really helpful for people watching to hear you say that. You know, I think that that goes a long way. I go through it. So, so much. And you know, I often tell people at clinics that if I have any special ability at all, it's the ability to sit alone in a room by myself with my instrument for hours every day. That is it. That's my superhero power. And But the truth is, that's better than any of those other gifts. That's I think that's better than having perfect pitch or just having an amazing memory because it doesn't matter how long we work on stuff. All that matters is you actually work on it and you get it done. And it doesn't matter if it takes me 20 minutes or four hours. I'll just put in the four hours and I'll get it done. But the truth is all this stuff that I do to learn this stuff, like if you knew what was actually going on in my head when I'm playing something like this, you might think like, like so I... <laughs> You know, 
out. Am I thinking, oh, D minor, and then the A, and then, and then pop, and then, and then this little 16th note rhythm? Heck no. You want to know what I'm thinking when I'm doing that? I'm thinking, okay, okay, breathe. Okay, okay this, this chair is a little uncomfortable. Okay, <laughs> oh, I'm sliding my face in the camera. Okay, open your, oh, no, don't open your eyes. <laughs> that is what I'm thinking when I'm playing. So does that mean that I have this, you know, this amazing innate musical ability and music just flows from my fingertips without any effort? That's what it sounds like, right? Heck no, it means the exact opposite of that. Because, and, and, and here's another thing before I go on. This sounds like it's super arrogant, but it's the opposite of that. What I just played there is, it was extremely easy for me. Extremely easy. But the only reason I can say that is because I wasn't thinking about anything and because I practiced this stuff so painfully slow for such a painfully long period of time that I have to play that. Anybody could play what I'm playing if they spent the time that I did work on. And they probably, most of you out there could probably learn it twice as fast because I'm a slow learner. It's so frustrating. So you could ask my wife, like when she just hears me play things over and over and over and the day after day after day it takes me forever to learn a song I, it's i have to i hate to admit this we, you know all of us performers we we want the magic to be we get out on stage and whoa we're just making this stuff up that it's never been done before even the greatest jazz improvisers even coltrane you know when you listen to all those different takes he did of giant steps it comes around we all have these things and these memorized licks that take us forever to learn and we do it over and over until it's just muscle memory. You know, some people might have better ears and can make up stuff better on the spot. It's not me. That's all I can say. I just have to put in the hard, hard time every day, and it's painfully slow, and I think I'm terrible, but somehow people <laughs> like it. The key to all of this stuff is just, can you sustain this? If you can just keep going forward, it doesn't matter how slow it is. It doesn't matter how slow you go. Um, you can get there if you can just figure out ways to sustain it. The mental game of like, it's okay, I'm not in a rush. I don't have to be great tomorrow or, you know, at four o'clock, <laughs> you know, because that's not how it works. Yes. And I think that's why there's this thing called the imposters syndrome that so many of us have. I know how long, how painfully, embarrassingly slow it is that I learn this stuff that I feel like I'm a fake. It's maybe, really, maybe, maybe you guys want to watch me practice. Like I could, yeah. I could, should we just well, they're all going to stop. They're all going to like go away from this video if we do that. Though. Well, that's the point. <laughs> that's the point. You'll learn, you'll learn. There's nothing magic about me. And even the ability to sit in a room for for hours that was not a natural ability to me that's not like a superhero it wasn't like I was bit by a spider and oh I loved sitting by myself for four hours and saying no when my friends want to go hang out no that was something I had to learn I remember when I was in uh, high school I was like I would say a hardcore video game addict and it wasn't until college when I was surrounded by really good musicians that that was the normal thing where they were just doing that and I just was like I want to sound like them. That's what they're doing. So I guess that's what I have to do. But the best thing I ever did was freshman year of college, Christmas break. You know, at school, I brought my Nintendo GameCube. It's dating myself a little bit. Christmas break, I brought the GameCube home and I played it during break. And then when it was time to go back to school, I had a moment where I was like looking at it. I'm like, if I turned the hours that I, pra that I played that thing into practicing, for at least for the next few years, I could probably go, I could probably do something. I could be like these other guys. And there was this moment where I like, you know, I set the Nintendo on the table. I'm imagining the, you know, the clouds had parted at this mo moment. <laughs> A choir of angels was singing, hallelujah, as I slowly walk away and leave the Nintendo home. And forever from that point, I've never been that good at video games again, because I kind of just made this decision mm -hmm. that I'm gonna, this is my priority right now. And yes, there will be times where I need breaks and, and whatnot, but that's that's what it is for everybody. It's just, are you going to put in the time? Did you cry a little bit? Probably. Yeah. yeah I, I I had the Sega Genesis when I was at ah, college. So if talk about dating. Talk about dating, I dating I, yourself. I found that three things are helpful as far as the like this idea of sustaining the practice. Uh, and this this is true even if you don't have dreams of being a pro, but you just want to be good at something. It's just about the daily sustaining it. And even if that for you is a little bit, I think that's I think it's actually more important to do like twenty minutes a day. Uh, every day rather than four hours one day and then nothing else. Yeah. Just that daily is just so important for our brain. But I, I found three things super important. The first one's really boring. It's this idea of like keeping yourself healthy, 
safe. And that's, that's doing a lot of the things that like your teachers suggested, like playing from your diaphragm, which isn't just good for tone, but it's, it, it's, it's actually like a good healthy thing. I often will start getting sore throats when I play and that's because I'm playing with tension up here and I'm <sighs> kind of closing off the throat and I have to remember, nope, okay, I should do actually some quick breathing exercises and some long tones. I try to do at least like a minute of long tones every day just to remind myself, blow from down here. Playing with good posture, um, you know, playing where your fingers aren't tense. That was a problem for me. I had to get into kind of the Alexander technique of, of just thinking everything is just totally natural. So those things are really important. And that's especially important if you want to do this for the long haul. Because if you're playing with tension in your fingers, yeah, that's fine for like a week or a couple months. But years later, you're going to probably have to stop playing. So staying healthy is key. Also, I could talk about like actually getting sleep, you know, taking care of yourself. In the business world of music, that could also mean just find ways to make money. Like if that's like get a day job, there's no shame in that. Mm. But like actually be able to survive doing this so you can focus also on what you love to do. So staying healthy is number one. Number two is keep it challenging. Um, you know, if, if I were to just play the same songs over and over and over year after year and just the same techniques, I would get bored with that and I think I would lose interest. For me, it's always about what's around that corner. What's another new technique I can learn? Um, listening to other people and being like, oh, man, I want to learn how to do that. And that's, you know, that's one of the great things about your channel is, you know, you're exposing people to so many things. So keep it challenging for yourself. And then it'll always, it, it can be this lifelong pursuit. And musicians always say it's a lifelong thing. We were never there. I'm heck, heck no, I'm, am I even close to being there, whatever that means. Um, and then three, Super important, keep things fun. And that's what a lot of us more serious musicians forget about when we go to school, when we go to college and major in music. And yes, there is there is such a thing as like, you know, there's kind of more serious music and more poppy music. But even if you're pursuing something serious, like find ways to keep it fun, whether that means it's kind of related to the challenging thing of like, you know, if you're just a classical musician, try your hand at improvising a little bit or try playing in a pop band on a different instrument. Play a different instrument. Mess around with that. Um, look for ways to perform in front of people. A lot of us just get in that practice room and we lose motivation because we're not actually sharing our music. Or post a video, you know. Try to have fun with it somehow. And that's, that's what, you know, that's one of the things I, I hope that I'm doing with my music is trying to find this balance of you know there is some a little bit of serious in what I do and obviously serious in the, the amount of practice I do but I want to keep it fun and you know to me there's two types of music there's good music and there's bad music and I like them both <laughs> <laughs> so there's like you know there's artistic music which is like your fine wine or your steak maybe kids wouldn't like that stuff you know it, it takes years to develop the palate and that's fun that's the challenging side that's fun but then sometimes I just want McDonald's or I want candy, you know, <laughs> and that's like the pop music. And so my music, you know, I hope that it's somewhere in between. It bounces back and forth. It offends some people on this side. It offends some people. It bores some people. On, you know, I don't know. But keep it fun. Keep it challenging and stay healthy doing it. And you can you can do anything. <laughs> hey, Derek, thanks so much. man. Yeah, I thanks, really Jay. appreciate all of this. We got to do this more often. Yeah, we'll do more. We'll do All more right. content, man. Cool. Love it. Okay, bye.